Hello everyone, my name is Music Man, and next we have one of my most requested videos, which is the Leo's Memory Spawn Point Guide. So throughout this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show all nine Leo's Memory Spawns, and I'm going to show where you should go as Hunter as you get each individual spawn in Leo's Memory. So yeah, without further ado, let's take a look. All right, it's been a little while since I've done one of these spawn point guides, but I think I remember what I did first was I went and I labeled all my uh, areas, kind of define my terms type of thing. So you all know when I talk about an area, you know exactly where I'm talking about. So we'll start with um, the most clear cut area for that everybody should understand, which would be the factory. The factory is the godly kiting area of this map. It features uh, a god a series of really good pallets there and there. Um, the one leading into the building is considered a god pallet. We call it a god pallet because you either need to break it, you need to blink through it, or go a crazy long distance around. Um, in order, there's basically no way you can mind game around it. Um, there's also a really long area um, where survivors can run, and if the hunter's chasing up, they can drop a level. And that makes a lot more sense in the game, but I think, generally speaking, um, you all understand by now that Factory is a very, very strong area for uh, survivors. And next, we'll move on to Shack. Uh, Shack is also another easy one to understand. There's a god palette in it, and there's a window. Um, it's just like any other shack in the area of the game. Generally speaking, pretty decent area for a survivor. Although certain hunters, like primarily sculptor, violinist, can still work around the shack. So, um, yeah, that's shack. And this is going to be middle. There's a series of pallets right here. But generally speaking, what they're going to do if you catch a survivor here is they're going to transition to factory. So not necessarily the greatest position to find survivors in, but... It's definitely better than um, Shack or Factory. And now this area right here, I generally call this uh, Shack Gate. And I just call it that because the Shack's right there and the Gate's right there. So this corner is a pretty decent area to catch survivors in. Um, again, not super easy access to Factory. They can make it to Shack from here, but... As I said before, um, Shaq, you can still chase there if absolutely necessary. So that's not a terrible area to find a survivor at. Um, this right here, I mean, I never really had a clear-cut defined name for it. So I just kind of always called it like Factory Corner. Um, it's, a it's one of the rougher areas for survivors to be in. So definitely you want to try to go there if a survivor spawns there. Not... Um, I would say easy access to factory, although a lot there's not a whole lot there for transitioning tools for the survivors to be at. Um, so generally speaking, that's a pretty decent area to find a survivor in. And let's see, this right here, this is crap corner. Um, there's a couple pallets here, but it's a generally, I would say, the worst spot in the map for a survivor. Um, there's just a lot of areas that aren't really good for kiting. There's one pallet way in the back that's like almost useless, and that's like one of the two pallets I'm talking about. There are um, a few transition tools to get to factory from there, but still, generally speaking, not a great area for survivors. And this area right here, we'll call this Moon Gate. And we call it Moon Gate because, I mean, one, there's a gate right here. But if you look in the sky, the moon will also appear about right there. And this is another area that's relatively rougher. I mean, there's three pallets back there with a bunch of thin walls. Um, there's transition potential to shack. But still, generally speaking, not a terrible area to um, find a survivor at. So now that I've defined my areas, let's start with... Spawn group one. And spawn group one is the factory spawn. You can see the hunter spawns right here. And this survivor is likely to transition into factory. Um, 
Although that does rotate into the hunter, there's a very low chance that the hunter will actually prioritize chasing factory because there's so many areas for the survivor to go to from there. When I get this spawn, I like to go straight up here. And I've gotten to the point where, as you'll see later on, the spawn groups, like a lot of the other spawn groups, you'll see like, um, uh, this is easiest determined on arms factory, but they're pretty clear cut. Like uh, the numbers kind of go in a circle, making it easier to memorize, but Leo's memory is kind of wacky. So I don't have like the memorized by spawn group number, but I know if I get a specific spawn, where I'm gonna wanna go. So right here, I'm gonna transition up here. There's sometimes a cipher that spawns right here, but if not, it's very likely this survivor will transition to middle. Um, either way, there's still a good chase. If this is not a survivor you wanna go to, you can just keep going further to this cipher at Moongate where this survivor will most likely be decoding. So um, yeah, I think that's spawn group one. Um, I mean, obviously, if this survivor transitions here, this survivor's probably going to transition out um, to either uh, Shack Gate or to Shack itself. But yeah, I think that's about it for this spawn. So now we'll move on to spawn group two, another factory spawn. And generally speaking, I'm going to say the same thing. The only difference is... Yeah, this survivor is probably going to either go here or here, depending on what cipher is closer. Um, same thing with this survivor. But what I do when I get this spawn is, again, I'm going to make my way towards this moon gate. This survivor is going to be in the middle, so you can either go there or right here. These are rougher areas to find survivors at. Um, but generally speaking, this survivor right here is the one I'm going to prioritize chasing first, unless... This survivor transitions to a cipher, which spawns right there. Um, yeah, I think that's about good for spawn group two. And now we're gonna move on to spawn group three, and you're gonna see, oop, you're gonna see pretty much the. Uh, oh yeah, this is a way different spawn. You can see the other two spawns were over by factory. This one is over towards Shack Gate. So when I get this spawn, what I like to do is, I'll kind of do like a little curve. This will make more sense as I explain it. So I like to go through here. A lot of times this cipher will spawn. So I'll look through that window and see who it's who it is. And there is a decent chance the survivor, if they're in a voice chat team, they might go over to this cipher. Um, but I like to go to Shack there. Um, but if that's not who I want to go, then I can continue on to a cipher, which most likely spawned right there. If not, they'll probably go to middle and chase that survivor. Now, you can go over here, but that is very risky. You can see if you decide to go for that survivor, you either have to um, commit to this chase um, if that's not who you want to chase, say it's a mercenary or something, then you're pretty much forced to go to factory. So I would say that's extremely risky with pretty low benefit being that I find that those two survivors are more worth chasing um, in the area that they're at than the one that's at the arms, uh, not the arms corner, the factory corner. Um, but yeah, that's spawn group three. We've got six more left. <laughs> It's a whole lot of spawns. Now this one is Moongate. Moongate spawn is a little bit complicated because the survivor spawns so far out. But generally speaking, if you spawn this area, um, a lot of times what I personally do is I'll go up to the shack um, and then cut over to middle. Um, this survivor is likely to go to factory. So generally speaking, don't go there first. Um, but what I like to do is go to Shack because there's usually a survivor that will be at middle after that. But you can also, just to catch the survivor in the worst area of the map, go to Crap Corner, and there's a survivor that spawns there. But you can see, no matter where you go, generally speaking, if you go for one survivor, there's plenty of potential for the other survivors to rotate out since they um, 
kind of spawn a bit further away from each other in this spawn, especially the survivor that spawns furthest from the hunter. And yeah, that's spawn group four. And now we're going to move on to spawn group five. This is another tougher one because it's one of the spawns that's closer to the middle of the map. So this is the shack spawn. And what I do here is there's sometimes a cipher that spawns right there. I'll go to there first. And if not, I'll go over to this cipher. And the reason why I'm only recommending you to go to two survivors at once and not telling you where to go afterwards is that one, they could easily rotate to anywhere in the map at that point. But two, generally speaking, if you found your first two survivors, you'll pretty much be able to look around and see what ciphers are wiggling to know where the su survivor is after that. So that's just a little side note there is that generally speaking, you don't need to memorize more than two spawns unless you're a photographer main. Um, but yeah, so kind of go over here to then to Moongate. And yeah, of course, this cipher and this cipher and, or this cipher, if this is the one that spawns instead, will be the ciphers that are wiggling, generally speaking not super great areas to chase i mean of course this area is not bad to chase at however you spawn so at that point you're on the opposite corner of the map so it's really hard if you don't have teleport at that point but still i mean if it's a triple rescue team and that's the decoder um and they're decoding there it still might be worthwhile uh, it's a it's a matter of what your strategy is but that was spawn group five Spawn group six, kind of relatively the same thing. Uh, you're spawning shack. What I like to do here is go right to this cipher. This, this survivor almost always goes right there. This survivor is going to go to factory. This survivor is likely to go this way, this way. Um, but these two survivors spawn so close together and you can do pretty much the same thing. You start by going this way. And if that's not who you want to chase, you go over this way. Um, pretty much the same story as Spawn Group 5. So now with that, we're going to lead into Spawn Group 7, another pretty close to Moongate spawn. Now with this one, I actually do something a little bit different. Um, I mean... These two survivors pretty much spawn factory, so it's going to be really hard to chase them, which pretty much leaves you with these two survivors left. Now, what I like to do is I actually like to go over this way to this cipher. This cipher is a pretty decent area to catch a survivor at, especially if they don't rotate out. And if, you, if that's not a survivor worth chasing, it's likely that this survivor transitioned to the cipher that's right there. Um... I doubt they would go to middle, transition into the hunter. Um, so they'll either go to this cipher or possibly this cipher, but that's pretty unlikely. Um, but yeah, that is spawn group seven. So now we're going to go into spawn group eight. This is the factory spawn. This is one of my favorite spawns as hunter. So what I used to do was I used to go to the factory corner to this cipher and that usually give me free access to both these survivors but now what i've actually been starting to do is and there are still plenty of hunters that do this strategy i used to do it all the time and that's a perfectly viable strategy um but what i've actually been doing lately and this might surprise a few of you is that i actually go to this survivor it's a bit of a riskier spawn to go to but i find that this survivor a lot of times actually rotates to that cypher spawn right there if that cypher spawns in if not they're going to be in middle but catching a survivor in here um, it's generally going to be a really quick chase and being that i've been playing sculptor a lot lately um, that pretty much makes it so i can chase almost anybody i want um, so you can definitely go to uh, crap corner as a sculptor particularly but um, I think it's generally a pretty decent spawn for any hunter to go to. That's just my personal opinion. Most hunters do this by what I've seen. That is that corner right there. 
but I've actually been going here lately. So it's just up to you to decide what strategy you want to take. I think either one is perfectly fine. And now we're going to get into our last spawn point, spawn group 9, which is pretty much in between uh, shack gate and uh, factory corner. So again, these two survivors spawn factory. That's a pretty tough area to chase at. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to start going to shack gate to find this survivor here. And if that's not who you want to chase, then go right on to shack. Most of the time that cypher will spawn and it's going to be really tough if you don't find who you want to chase there. But if it really comes down to it, you might need to actually chase factory, but obviously that's going to be a last resort. So, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up all the spawn points. Well, being that this spawn point guide was one of the most requested videos uh, for me to make, I really hope you all learned everything you wanted to know about the Leo's memory uh, spawn points. So if you did learn something, uh, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And let me know that you appreciate it in the comment section below. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Bye bye now, everybody.